What's up, Buttercups? Today is just going to be a quick little thrifting vlog for you guys. We're going to head to a couple thrift stores and try to find things to flip on eBay to make a little profit. I'm taking you guys along for the ride. So when I go into thrift stores, I take my GoPro with me so you guys can you know, see the things I'm buying as I'm buying them. But obviously I don't wanna just hold my GoPro out like this when I'm in the store. So I clip it on this little clip thing on my backpack strap. But when I do that, it gives a nice point of view for you guys. And a couple of people have asked me how I film in thrift stores and this is how. These Adidas Ultra Boost Parley, uh, pretty good condition. A little stain right there, but that should come out. Go ahead and pick these up, 650. So the only thing I got at that uh, first Goodwill was this pair of Adidas Ultra Boost. I should be able to get about 35, for 30, 30 to 35 for them, maybe. Uh, but we're going to head into the bins now. The Goodwill bins is where you buy stuff by the weight. So you go in here and just buy whatever you want, and then you weigh it all. And they charge you $1.39 per pound. So there's a lot of junk in here, but if you're willing to dig through it, you can find some good stuff. found this really cool Led Zeppelin print t-shirt. It is not vintage. I looked at the sleeves here and you can see it's it's double stitch, not single stitch. And the date at the bottom says 2011. So it's definitely a reprint, but still pretty cool. Went ahead and picked it up. This sweatshirt is actually some merch from a YouTuber known as PewDiePie. He put this out when he finally hit 80 million subscribers. So definitely a cool piece, not worth much, but I can't leave it behind. So they put this nice big Nike spell out on this jacket, but it's on a AST sportswear something, not vintage, nothing, straight garbage. Found this new in the package item. It says CRU drive box. I have no idea what it is, but since it's new in the package and it had a barcode, I decided to scan it on Amazon. And when I did, I found out that the sales rank on it was really good. It was about 2000. And it wasn't going to bring a lot of money, about $5 after fees. But, you know, buying it here at the bins, it was super lightweight. It was probably cost me about 10 cents. So I went ahead and picked it up. So the bins was a little stale today, if I'm going to be completely honest. A lot of people ask me, like, they say, hey, I've got a bins two hours away from me. Is it worth the trip to go? And usually I say no, because it's so hit or miss. I would hate for you guys to drive two hours to the bins to get... A, a Led Zeppelin t-shirt, a PewDiePie sweatshirt, a laptop charger, and some computer box, you know. I did, however, only spend $2.85 on everything I got, and I went ahead and rounded up to $3 and donated the, the change to, to Goodwill. Um, you know, that Led Zeppelin shirt's pretty cool. It's not vintage. It's probably worth like 15 bucks, maybe. That PewDiePie sweatshirt was a, an exclusive merch from PewDiePie when he hit 80 million subscribers, and you can't buy that anymore, I don't believe. So I don't know. It's probably not worth a ton of money, but uh, it's, it's still a cool find. I couldn't just leave that at the bins. The laptop charger I picked up is probably worth like 10 bucks, and then that CPU box thing will pay out just over $5 on Amazon, and the sales rank on that is 2,000. If you don't know anything about Amazon sales ranks, the lower the sales rank, the better. Most things you're going to scan on the Amazon app are going to have probably a sales rank of like a hundred thousand up to a couple million or so. Anything under a hundred thousand is really good. Anything under 10,000 is extremely good. So something with a sales rank of 2000 is pretty much guaranteed to sell immediately once it hits the Amazon warehouse. So that's pretty much a guaranteed, you know, $2 in profit already. So the t-shirt, the sweater and the laptop charger are all pure profit now. So now I'm at my local Salvation Army. Let's see what they got going on today. These Sanook flip-flops, <clears throat> nothing fancy, but only $3.99. I got those. Not really much going on there. All I got were these flip-flops. They're Sanooks, which is a good brand, and they were only $3.99, and they're in very good con condition. So you should be able to get like, I don't know, maybe 20 bucks for them plus shipping. All right, so I'm at one more Goodwill today. I've never actually been to this one, so hopefully we'll find some good stuff. If not, I'm just going to go home because this has been... Uh, kind of a dead day so far. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thanks. You're welcome. So this location had a lot of good shoes. These Asics Gel Keanu 24s are in really good condition. Six dollars and fifty cents. So I went ahead and grabbed those. Next, I found these Nike Kids soccer cleats. I usually don't buy kids shoes, but these were only $4.50 and they were in excellent condition. And this time of year is a great time to sell soccer cleats as well. 
Then I'll grab these other ASIC shoes. The colorway was not as appealing as other shoes that I've bought in the past, but these were in excellent condition. So some dad is gonna love these. Then I found these Nike track running shoes in excellent condition, but they didn't have spikes. So I think I can run to play it again sports and grab some spikes and I should be able to get about $30 for these. I grabbed these Rika shoes. Rika is not a crazy brand. It's nothing incredibly valuable, but these were in excellent condition and only $6.50. So I think I can get 20 to 25 bucks for these plus shipping. Digging through the hat bin, I did find this master's hat, but it had a year on it and it was kind of dirty. So I decided to pass on that one. I did find this pretty cool goofy hat. I think it's unique and it was only a dollar. So I went ahead and grabbed this. I can probably get, you know, maybe 15 bucks for it or so. I went back to the shoes one more time and grabbed these New Balance women's shoes. They were in excellent condition. And just like Rika, New Balance is not something that's incredibly valuable, but really solid brand that can easily sell for 20 to 25 bucks. I did grab this Louisville Slugger baseball bat. It was a drop 10, meaning it's for like a little league play, not high school or collegiate, but it was $2.95. And I think you can get about 20 to 25 bucks for it this time of year. All right, that Goodwill was pretty good. I spent like 45 bucks or so. Got a lot of shoes, got that baseball bat, some other good stuff. Uh, so we're gonna go to one more. This Goodwill right here is on the way home. Try to find a little bit more stuff before we call it a day. Right off the bat, I found these really nice keen hiking boots. They are brown leather men's hiking boots. Just really good condition, a little dirt on the bottom, but that will definitely come off. I didn't see any rips or tears or, or cracks in the soles. So I went ahead and picked these up. These were $8.50. I found these Nike Tiger Woods golf shoes, which is usually a pretty good pickup, especially white ones, but you can see here that they were peeling and opening up a little bit on the toe, so went ahead and passed on those. Walking by the clothing aisle, I did see this sitting on the end cap, nice little Woolrich men's Hawaiian shirt with swordfish on it. I'm really not looking for clothing, but $4.75, probably a $20 to $25 shirt. Shout out to uh, College Picker for that. That is my new computer because my old one uh, bit the, bit the dust here. Hello, Mose. Hello. How are you? Did you have a good nap? Awesome. Let's do a quick little unboxing of this thing just to show you guys what this thing looks like. It's a really cool, like, gaming laptop. Definitely more than I need, but, like I said, Eric gave me a really, really good deal on it. Here we go. Ah, oh, yeah. Look at that. This thing is sick looking already. You can see those backlit keys. I've always wanted a backlit keyboard. Look at the specs on this thing. Intel Core i7 processor, Nvidia GeForce graphics card, 16 gigs RAM, 256 SSD, plus one terabyte HDD. I don't know, if you guys don't know anything about computers, that doesn't really mean anything to you, but this is a very, very good computer. Look at that, look at those keyboard lights. Like the, the rainbow RBG. It's sick. Eric, thank you so much for the deal, dude. This computer is awesome. I'm really excited to start using it. If you guys do not follow the College Picker on YouTube slash Instagram, I think probably his two strongest categories are electronics and Patagonia stuff. He really knows what he's doing when it comes to both of those. So I'll link his YouTube channel up here to this card and I'll link his Instagram, I guess, in the description of the video. But if you're not subscribed to him on YouTube, do so. And if you're not following him on Instagram, do that as well. So here's most of the stuff I got today. And first of all, I know I used plastic bags today. I totally forgot to bring my IKEA bags with me. So as a way to sort of apologize and make things right in the world, I'm going to plant a tree in my yard to make up for the plastic bags I used. But the problem with that is that I don't have a tree to plant. So instead I'm just going to bury this onion. So my totals for the day is I spent about three hours on the road thrifting today. I drove 41 miles. I spent a total of $72 and I should see a total profit of about 200, maybe $225, somewhere around there. Today was not an especially great day of thrifting. It was pretty normal. And I think it's important to show you guys days like today so you don't get like a false sense of what it's actually like to be a full-time reseller. 
Occasionally you will go to a thrift store and be able to spend a hundred to hundred fifty dollars on stuff and knock it out of the park. But other days, days like today, you drive around to five or six thrift stores and you really just find a few things in each store and you don't really hit any home runs. Also, before I end the video today, I have two more postcards and a package that I got in my PO box today. And I'm gonna open that on camera right now. So this package is from my friend, Emily Conway. She has a great channel. I will link her channel in the description up there. She's a relatively new reseller and YouTuber, but she's doing very, very well for someone who's new. So Emily's, uh, I think I know what this is and I'm excited. Also, here's a tip for you guys. If you have a Rolo printer, I know Emily has a Rolo printer. You don't wanna put clear tape over anything on the, on the label because it will make the ink disappear. I don't know if you can see that, but she put a little bit of plastic tape over this part and it made my name and part of my address disappear. So make sure that if you use a Rolo printer or a thermal printer of any kind, you don't put clear tape over it because it will make the ink disappear. Emily found this shirt the other day and she asked me if I would wear it. And I said, absolutely I would. And it says, Mr. Cool, which is definitely me. Emily, thank you so much for the shirt. I greatly appreciate it. And I will wear it in a future video, probably tomorrow. Then I have two postcards I received. If you don't know, when you send me postcards, I put them on my little wall over there. It's got a collection of all the postcards I've ever received. And also put a pin in the United States, wherever you're from. This first card, is from uh, Terry and Anna King, and they are from Seagrove, North Carolina. It says, we love your videos. Your teaching is great. Uh, we've been selling for one year. We have learned so much. Please keep teaching. Uh, and again, Terry and Anna King. Thank you so much. And they are from Seagrove, North Carolina. And then the second postcard is from Brooklyn, obviously. And it says, hey, bud, just found your videos. I think you are terrifically genuine. Thanks for being real and reminding me of how I got started. The key to success is finding repeatable sales with no listing time. Need more hairspray and less clothes. I definitely agree with you. And this is from Russ in Brooklyn. Russ, thank you so much. I will put both of these cards on my map. So Seagrove, North Carolina is about right there, like just south of Asheboro, North Carolina. And then Buffalo, New, Buffalo, uh, New York is, I don't know, somewhere around that area. Somewhere. It's really tiny down there. I uh, could be wrong, but somewhere close. So if, so if you guys want to send me postcards, uh, that's what it looks like. I'll put it up on the board and then put a little pin in where you're located. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. I appreciate your time tremendously. You're the best, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.